Shillong, often known as the Scotland of the East, earned its name for its salubrious climate, a perfect place for the British officers and soldiers to meditate and calm their minds back in the days. Much like many heritage structures built by the British in the early 1900s, the Earl Holiday Home, previously known as Earl India Sanatorium at Auckland in Kindai Lat, is one such house constructed with the purpose of accommodating people seeking medical treatment in Shillong. The Earl Holiday Home was founded by late Bolanard Barua in 1920 with a view to shelter the visitors in Shillong particularly the ailing persons who would visit Shillong to regain the strength and mend the health. According to the historical background written by late Dr. D. Banerjee, the establishment of the Pasteur Institute in Shillong in 1915 led to many people coming to Shillong for treatment. Pasteur Institute in Shillong was established for the purpose of controlling diseases through the usage of the vaccine. There was, however, a lack of an establishment for those looking to convalesce within the station. In 1918, Chief Commissioner of Assam Province, Archdale Earl, prepared a plan for a health resort within the centre of the town which led to the Earl Sanatorium project. Four acres of land were allotted by the government to Earl for the sanatorium. Later, a board of trustees was formed under an Assamese philanthropist, Bholanath Barua, in 1918. Barua took a keen interest in the project and initiated the construction of this building, which later came to be known as the B. Barua House. The building was completed in 1920. The current trustee in charge of Earl Holiday Home, Keith Pariyan, argued that four acres of land where the house stands originally belonged to Bolanad Barwa and an additional six acres of land was allotted by the government for the Earl Sanatorium project. However, according to noted writer Uma Purkayastha, Bolanad Barwa, a native of Assam and a reputed merchant, purchased a big plot of land measuring 6.7 acres in 1920 and constructed two bungalows thereon, one of which was named the Barwa Cottage and the other as the B. Barwa Hall. Subsequently, two more bungalows were also constructed on the same plot of land, one of which was named after Rani Avoishri, who had also made significant contribution towards the construction of the two bungalows, while the other was named the Dahlia Cottage. While the Dahlia Cottage is still standing, the Rani Avoishri Cottage has been dismantled. In total, the Earl Holiday Home Trust owned property as huge as 10 acres now reduced to 7 acres as 10 feet was given for the expansion of the Oakland Road and around 2.5 acres for the construction of the road linking Kandai Lab with Polo Hills. The seven acres of land also houses one of the famous family restaurants in the city, the City Hat Dhaba. Apart from the old B. Barwa house, two more annexes were constructed at later dates. One, the Assam-type structure with 10 rooms, constructed in the 1970s, and the RCC building with 66 rooms, constructed in the early 2000s. The old house, which previously had 10 rooms, now has only four usable rooms for guests, all of which are under renovation. Back in the day when the trust was formed, the Earl Holiday Home, as a charitable trust, was expected to provide charitable services to the society, but for a very long time, no charitable work was being carried out. It was only much later that the Earl Holiday Home Dispensary was established to serve the purpose it was created for. This dispensary is located within the compound of the Earl Holiday Home and provides free medicines to patients. It opens from 9 a.m. till 12 noon every day. It was also learned that in the years that followed after the death of Polanard Barwa, a new building with a similar structure as the main house 
but located a little far from the main compound, was constructed to accommodate the staff of Earl Holiday Home. Back in the day, rent was collected from the staff who occupied the rooms in the building. Until day, tenants whose grandfathers or great-grandfathers were staff of the bungalow are still living there. Keith Pariyat, who took over as the trustee in charge from ex-MP J.E. Taryang in 2013, reeled that financial constraint was a bone of contention in managing and maintaining the old and worn-out B. Barwa house. He said that gradually the old structure will be dismantled as the wood and the walls are all worn out, but the design of the Sam type bungalow will remain the same. Well, history is important and uh, a lot of people are interested to know how this place came about and uh, you know, the history behind it and so many things that one would really uh, enjoy when you read about it, when you get to know about it. And uh, it's uh, generally a little difficult for us to maintain that because it involves a lot of financial expenditure for us to take care of the building, to take care of whatever. And uh, so basically right now what we're trying to do is maintain the looks of the house, but using modern construction material. It'll look better, it'll generally last longer, but we lose the general lovely look of those old buildings that we used to have. We definitely will lose that, which is a sad thing, but then again, it's impractical to maintain the uh, you know, with the old type of materials. So that's why we're changing over. It is indeed a pity to know that the old materials like wood, straw, lime and sand-made walls that had sustained the century-old building will be replaced by cement. But there is comfort in the fact that the structure will remain the same and it would always serve as a reminder of the purpose the bungalow was constructed for and the contribution made by Polanad Barwa to the infrastructural heritage of the state.